Okay, welcome everybody to the June 22nd Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As uh, I believe everybody on the call has been here before, you are aware that we have two things that we must abide by. The first is the antitrust policy that is currently displayed on the screen. Uh, and the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. So uh, for announcements today, we have the Hyperledger Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you do have anything that you want to include in that newsletter, please do leave a comment on the uh, wiki page that it's linked in the agenda. Um, I also had a, a comment in here to have you review the Encourage projects to set annual goals. Um, I know that there's been a few of us that have reviewed that. Oh no, I did see your message about not merging this until we merge 123, um, which we will be discussing today. Um, so I think you know there's still a few folks that need to review the encourage projects to set annual goals, but we did talk about it last week and I think everybody was on board with it. So just to, um, you know, give your thumbs up on, on GitHub itself. And we've also got a workshop that is coming up on July 11th uh, for the Hyperledger Aries Framework JavaScript release. Um, so how you set up an agent and issue credentials is the topic there. So if you are interested, please do click on the link there in the agenda for any additional details on, on how to attend that workshop. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? No. OK, uh, so then the next thing that we have on the agenda are quarterly reports. We did get the Cello report to come in this week. Um, I did see a few comments on there. Arno, I think uh, I also read your comment on that one this morning. I think that uh, they actually did do the release, but yet they, um, in the current uh, kind of or the last quarter plans, they they commented that they were working on it. I was also confused by that uh, okay. as I read it. So um, I think I convinced myself that it was correct, but uh, we'll see what the, the cello folks have to say about that. But I don't think it is out. In fact, I looked at the repo and the change log and it, it says 0 0.9, I think, or something like this. So it doesn't talk about the one zero. I was like, okay, I wasn't sure how to figure it out, but oh, well, there it is. So the change log file, I guess, is not up to date. Yeah, okay, so it is confusing. Yeah. <laughs> At least we can yeah, agree to like, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I also read it. I was like, wait, what? You said you released it. How, how can you be working on it? Um, so, I yeah, I definitely had to convince myself that that was uh, what it, it seems what to it be two to versions in <laughs> fact there is two one zero versions there's the one zero where i guess they froze the code and then there's the one zero ga i think that's where it becomes confusing but see prepare for the one zero ga yeah so the this is labeled as pre-release the ga is pre-release from november and then one zero came so out. One zero, okay, so one zero is more recent. Okay, so yeah, so the report is needs a bit of fixing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks. So we'll we'll try to get that uh, updated. Were there any other comments that anybody had on the cello report that we should talk about? No. Okay. Uh, so we don't have any past due reports. Uh, we are expecting to get the base due and the caliper report today. Um, so we should be able to um, hopefully have those on the agenda for next week. Uh, the sawtooth one, we're still waiting for uh, some answers to some questions. And I did see some uh, grammar changes as well being reflected there. So uh, we'll wait to get that one merged into uh, the repo until we get those answers back. 
Any questions on the report? No, okay. So for discussion today, uh, we do have the annual review policy. I did make some changes based on our conversation last week that are listed in the agenda here. Um, I think there's just a few outstanding questions. Um, the first is the timeline. Uh, I did see on the poll that seven folks had um, selected that they would like it to be within a single quarter. So I did make that change yesterday. Uh, you can see in the timeline that first sentence says that annual reviews will replace the Q1 quarterly report. Um, so uh, just wanted to talk about that, make sure everybody was okay, and if there were any concerns there, because I know not everybody had a chance to vote on the timeline uh, poll that was out there. Okay, uh, so if there's no concerns there, I think the second uh, open item was uh, the number of folks that need to be responsible. Um, so the number of responsible TOC members, Rama, I think you had suggested that we have uh, at least two people who are responsible. Um, so I wanted to see, I couldn't remember last week uh, if we had come to any sort of decision on whether or not it would um, makes sense to have two corroborating opinions. Um, my biggest concern with having two people responsible is that if two people are responsible, nobody's responsible. Um, and so I want to make sure that we definitely have, you know, at least one person that we can go to uh, to to have, um, you know, responsible for the the reviews. But if we do think we need a, a backup or a um, second person to you know, help gather any sort of information, that's fine. Um, but wanted to talk about that with the, the TOC and see what thoughts were. Peter? We could mark one of them as primary and the other one as backup, secondary, or observer, or any other label, in my opinion. Okay, so you're in favor of two then, Peter? Yes, but I also agree with what you said is that if it's not a single person responsible, then no one is responsible. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Marcus? Um, I also like uh, having two people responsible here and maybe not as a um, primary and secondary, but more like a good cop and bad cop <laughs> position. Um, I, I know, I'm just joking. No, I think it's nice to have two people Um, I, I'm just, I'm smiling here with the good cop, bad cop. Um, I, I think that's an interesting, um, <laughs> an interesting idea. I don't know that, uh, I'm, I, I think, I feel like I'm, uh, labeled as a, a bad cop anyway. So, um, but I, maybe I don't want to be labeled as a bad cop. So, uh, <laughs> I let's, uh, let's maybe not label ourselves as bad cops, circuit cops, because uh, that, that might uh, end up being a, a concern for, for folks. But uh, I, I think it's, it's amusing to me. Uh, I like it, but I don't like it. So, Rai. Uh, I guess my question is, what level of staff involvement uh, do you want, which is to say, how much do you want me to get involved, um, if at all? Uh, is this something, should the staff have a role in this, possibly as the bad cop, possibly as a mediator, or just do it as the currently, as it's done currently with the quarterly reports? I ask primarily around the, you know, the turbulence that I create around the sawtooth report. Yeah, so Rai, I think uh, as far as staff involvement in the actual reviews, the thing that I think we can take and use is, is the work that you've done to really gather some analytics around when maintainers have been 
less contributing or or those sorts of things. So I think the, the data gathering is a, a thing that you already do and that we could utilize. Um, so I guess for me, you know, uh, I would like to continue to have you run those or um, to, to utilize that data. That's, I think, my thought on staff involvement, but uh, and obviously the the other pieces that are defined currently in the document, which is to, to send out the notifications of the information that's due, um, that the, the report is due, uh, I think is the, the one piece that I have in there. Uh, and then the timeline, I think, is the second piece that I have staff responsibility for. Okay, I'm just quickly for everyone that's not aware, I run this script every day and it tracks who does what you know i can see like everything that this uh, github user has ever done uh in terms of of github involvement and then on each uh repo i have i can look and see what has timo done for the last year and it gives me the the dates of every activity for the project that that timo has done so those are the stats uh, that I'm collecting. Yeah. Any any other things that uh, the TOC thinks the staff would be uh, helpful in in providing with these annual reviews? Okay, uh, so right now I have at least two people who've given um, kind of a, or maybe it's three people, I guess, that have given the yes, let's have more than one person um, that we assign to these project annual reviews. Is there uh, any other thoughts on that? Um, dissenting thoughts or uh, if not, I will make that change to reflect kind of that primary, secondary Good cop, bad cop, whatever we decide we're going to call it in the annual review when I write it. Okay. Um, so if we have no dissenting, that's what I'll do. I'll make that change to reflect that. The last thing that I did uh, was Stephen had recommended that we put together a template specifically for answering. Um, the questions about the content of the, the annual report. So I did do that in the pull request, um, put together a template. And so I wanted to just take a look at that template and see if there's anything else that anybody is interested in making sure that we include in that template as we, we go forward. Um, so Rai, I don't know if you would mind bringing up the, the template in the pull request. So the, the items that are listed here uh, used to be in the content section of the, the PR. Uh, what I did is I just moved them to the template itself uh, around the project health and including links to the LFA Insights page and, and you know providing commentary on what we're seeing in those insight pages as far as, you know, are do we see increasing or consistent contribution activity um, and, and moving forward with that. The maintainer diversity, which I think is important for us to really understand and dig into and think about uh, project adoption. So do we do we know who's adopted the project? Do we understand if, if there's companies that are using the project or not? Um, and then goals. So for goals, we have the performance against the prior goals. Um, and we also have uh, information about uh, like the goals for the next year. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, Rai, just scrolling down uh, in the template, uh, any sort of help that is required to meet the upcoming goals um, that, that can be listed. And then if the project has any changes that they would recommend for themselves as far as uh, the life cycle states that they're in. So, um, 
you know, wanted to check in with the TOC and see if they thought there was any other sorts of things that we should be asking of the projects as we look at the annual review instead of the quarterly review. Steven? Um, one suggestion might be to try to be, um, try to make this a little more factual. So one thing we could do, for example, is scroll to the maintainers section. Um, request that they put a link in to the maintainers file from last year and the one from this year. Um, and obviously the first year, you know, maybe we don't get that, but, but try to be, um, try to tie it to actual, um, like specific information and then add commentary about it, ask them to add commentary. So link to last year's link to this year's um comments about how many you have same with the goals because we want to encourage them to have we want to encourage all projects to have goals um a link to the goals from last year a link for the goals from this year and then commentary about it and that would give us that combination of um you know acts as well as um discussion about the those back. Also encourage people to have a maintainer diversity file or sorry, a maintainer's file and and um to, to keep it up to date. So um if okay. Thanks hey, Stephen. You were breaking up there at the end a bit, but I think I did get it all um unless it's me that's breaking up but we'll see if if marcus um will clarify who was breaking up it's not you it's me okay yeah that's fine i believe we, i steven. think we got yeah. it all though steven <laughs> you're up marcus um yeah one thought i have here i mean the, the term, I mean, I, first of all, I, I like this template uh, a lot. I think that's a good starting point. So when I think about the goals, I mean, the term goal sounds like a commitment. And I think this is also the int intention here, which is good. Um, but I believe, um, I mean, we as a TOC, we would also maybe acquire uh, some knowledge about other future work items or directions where a, good, a project or the maintainers might think of but they don't at this point want, want to commit to those directions as, as a goal because i mean a goal is then maybe evaluated at some point and then we see hey did they achieve all the goals but i mean if we have like an optional subsection of goals like future directions where they can put things they would like to explore in the future without uh, giving a strong commitment on certain things. That would be one thing I, I, I think would be interesting as well. Okay. Thanks for that, Marcus. Dave? Uh, yeah, to follow on from what Stephen was saying, kind of related to that, for the maintainer diversity, it would also make sense to make sure that the maintainer's files were up to date and anybody that needs to be retired is retired. So it's sometimes awkward to go, to retire your your colleagues on a project and the annual review is a good um, force point to, to make that happen and for maybe the TOC lead to be the the bad cop in this case and to make sure that mm -hmm. the maintainers are all active and everything is healthy there yeah I completely agree uh, Dave I think it's important that we we do point out where we've got issues with maintainer files that haven't retired, um, particular maintainers that haven't contributed in the past year or six months or whatever that number is that we we decide um, is important. So um, I can add some information there about just reminding people that they should be retiring their um, maintainers that are, haven't been active. Arun? Hey, Tracy. Um, so this is in continuation to the goals and the you know, future scope kind of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, just thought of sharing my opinion. I think 
it's okay to have a goal set. For instance, goals are something that we want to achieve, like set a measured uh, way of saying, hey, by the end of this year, maybe we want um, we want to achieve, let's say, a new uh, major release for the project. And we would like this project to have adoption because of these major capabilities that we want to introduce. And um, I think it's okay to have um, diversion from the goals. If at all project wants to have in uh, between the year because of maybe changing priorities or due to, let's say the uh, new uh, set of maintainers come in and then they propose new set of features to work on. And then they decide, hey, yeah, maybe our initial goals were not um, accurate. Maybe we want to pivot it out. And we could provide an option in two ways. So there can be an um, addendum to the goals or maybe like a um, amendment to it uh, as and when like maintainers decide to do it. Or the other option could be uh, during annual review, um, the TUC member who is responsible, they will be working with the project team and they will make sure this is communicated well. And I'm sure the project must have had done something in response, I mean, in something other than what they have already promised. And then TOC can definitely consider that um, something else as in response to the goals and then the, the amendments, if any, to the goals can be added later during the review process. Or it could be described in the annual review saying that we started with this and then during midpoint, we decided to pivot it out like this. And then here we are uh, at the end of year with these things in. That can be a, a good thing to mention in the annual report as well. Yeah, yep. Um, I do have the uh, parenthetical there against uh, the performance against prior goals. It says we won't penalize you if your goals change for good reasons. Um, maybe I'll clarify that a bit more just to, to reflect um, a couple of things, right? Like. Uh, I think it's also okay if you don't meet your goals, if you've made some progress towards those goals, right? Like uh, maybe you're 75% of the way to towards the goal that you set at the beginning of the year. Um, that's okay too, right? Like you were you were working towards it and it just didn't happen within the year um, or, or things, like you said, changed in some way. And so that one maybe got deprioritized a bit. Um, you know, I, I think there's, there's definitely... Um, reasons for goals to change and we have to be cognizant of that but i do also think that it's worth mentioning right a, a bit more in the instructions that um you know let us know what they were let us know if you changed them um and, and that sort of thing um and, and just the the commentary right i mean we're looking for information about what's happening with the project um and whether or not they they seem to be on track in in some way shape or form so heart Hey, thanks, Tracy. So um, I really agree with your last point there. Um, and I think we should probably try to emphasize that, you know, projects will not be punished if they're, you know, doing good work, even if they sort of don't meet their goals. I worry that if we, if, if things even look a little bit punitive, like if, if people are sort of afraid to not meet their goals, they might set like overly uh, conservative and goals that are basically, you know, not really what they want to achieve, but what they're sure they can achieve, if that makes sense. You know, and we'd probably like projects to to list what they want to achieve, not, you know, what they're sure they can achieve the next year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as as you suggested, making that language uh you know very non-punitive I, I think is important because that will give the ts that will encourage and incentivize projects to give the tsc the most accurate impression of what they want to do yep yep okay i will make some some verbiage changes there to to reflect that um i think maybe even removing the word penalize um Right, like that implies that we were planning on penalizing somebody for something. Um, so I'll, I'll work on just the phrasing there and, and try and really help people understand uh, the importance of the, the annual reviews and, and what we're looking for, right? It's 
is really a let's see what you're you're looking to accomplish let's see what you have accomplished um and and you know i i think it's i think it's just important for us to be able to understand where projects are at okay any other comments or thoughts to improve this change it Okay, I will um, make the changes that we have discussed then for the annual review and the annual review template uh, to get those changes in place uh, and then move this from a draft PR to a um, to a non draft PR uh, and then we can review it that way um, and maybe have a vote on it uh, next week if, if we're ready for that. Um, yeah. So that, that's it for the, the annual review then. I think now we're up to the task force discussions. So Bobby, I think it's up to you to take us through the rest of the meeting. Well, then it's gonna be a short one. Uh, All right. <laughs> uh, let me just sum up what's going on with the two task force. I'll start with the documentation task force. Uh, due to the overwhelming um, applications to the mentorship program, we have a, a great team going into the summer working with us. Um, Arunaman's on the call right now. She's my uh, mentee. Um, so what we plan on doing um, is for right now, I'm going to say suspend the task force reports to the TOC for the summer um, so that we can meet our goals, which is we have five areas we're working on. One is the GitHub, which Tracy, you know how that's going, trying to get that uh, two-pronged approach, a good template for new projects and um, good documents from the GitHub um, repos that are consistent with the look and feel of Hyperledger. Um, so those are the two things for that. We're working um, on getting some templates out there for people with the new look and feel and the new branding. Um, to support any kind of uh, creativity they want um, to make the, um, that easy for them to just put their knowledge down and not have to worry about the formatting or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, we're also working closely with the onboarding task force, which um, again uh, is a combined effort. Um, so there are a lot of changes happening with the new website and the new branding. So that our help in that piece is kind of slowed down until that happens. Um, but there are other spots where people come into the community, like the Discord and all those other places, and we're trying to make it, um, Ben has defined uh, four personas that come into Hyperledger. We're trying to make it so those four personas, wherever they come in, can get to where they go, uh, where they need to be, and there's user guides and documentation support for them in all of those spots that they come in. Um, and then with the best practices, I know that uh, that task force has had, had a documentation piece, which our subcommittee is looking at their findings. And I know in our last meeting, we kind of talked about how that's going to work into a badging process. So we're on, uh, we want to work with that as well. Another piece is the uh, mentorship programs all have a documentation piece. So we've sent out uh, some members of our team. Um, well, we were, we had a presence at the initial meeting offering our support and some of our teammates have made associations with some of the lab projects, as well as some of the incubated and graduated projects uh, to offer our documentation support. Um, and basically what the task force wants to do in the summer is work on those things to get them down. And so we can present them to you. Um, the task force at the end of the summer, but I do think the um, the group wants to present what I just summed very quickly to the task force in a week or two um, with more specifics, um, and that would coincide again with the onboarding um, in a week or two, um, so that let's say in two weeks um, the task force will present to the TOC exactly what our goals are for those uh, topics I mentioned. And then we'll be on our way in the summer to work on those. So that's it for the two task force. Um, hopefully we'll be on the agenda in two weeks for uh, a more formal uh, goal setting with no punitive damages if we don't meet them kind of thing. <laughs> okay. And that, 
um, that's going to be a specifically in the task force meeting itself, if you will, right? Um, the one that happens on Monday. Yes, correct. Those meetings yeah. will still stay every Monday and uh, we're going to offer support to, uh, again, we're going to try to hit every project um, and every lab that needs document to support to offer that to see what it looks like so that they have a contact person on the task force in case they get stuck with their documentation. Okay, great. Any questions for Bobby? All right, uh, so next week I am on holiday. I will not be here. Um, Arun, I believe is going to, to run the, the meeting next week. Um, so I think the item on the agenda for next week is the security task force, which we had put off for this week, um, given the meeting with the open SSF. So just want to confirm that the security task force will be ready to present next week. Right, Tracy, there is open SSF meet, meeting next Wednesday. We'll understand more uh, after that meeting. The other agenda item that I could think of was uh, last week there were asks in creating the templates for uh, like the annual goal setting. That could be another topic. So we'll get started with the PR and we'll have those discussions in the DOC call. Okay, sounds great. Anything else that anybody would like to make sure is on the agenda for next week? All right, so if you do come up with anything, uh, definitely ping it in the TOC chat or ping a room. Uh, he'll be walking you through the agenda next week and I will see you, I guess, in a couple of weeks. And unless there's anything else, we will conclude the call. But is there anything else before we do that? I'll just say out loud what I said on Discord. I've invited all the TOC members to the uh, private repo where I keep all the GitHub statistics. So comments, questions are uh, enjoyed. You know, please help. All right, great. Thanks for that, Ray. All right, so we will uh, talk to you. Uh, well, some of you will talk again next week, and I will definitely talk to you in two weeks' time. So have a great, um, a great week.